was standing in a wide plain. Foothills stretch to the north, where clouds gather around an ominous peak. A dirt path winds from a lonely chapel to the east, through the plains where you're standing, and south into a bustling town. Wispy mists gather over marshland in the west, where a thin tower stands alone in the bog. Your weapon, rusty, but trusty. A very small flask to carry water. You stand at the end of a dirt path, facing a small chapel. The stucco walls are faded, many roof tiles are missing. The great oaken doors are locked. The congregation is nowhere to be found. A small cemetery of crooked headstones lies in the shadow of the cracked steeple. The dirt path winds westward through a great featureless plain. A zombie totters aimlessly nearby. There is an open grave nearby. Your blow knocks the zombie into a grave. There is a deep empty grave in the cemetery. Several bloated rats and a zombie corpse float in the foot of the filthy water at the bottom. Don't fall in. A grotesque zombie head is stuck on the root near the top of the grave. You bag the horrific trophy as proof of your deed. The smell may make you unpopular. wind-blasted face of a mountain. Storm clouds coil above the summit, pelting you in the sparse vegetation with torrential downpour. Far below, beyond the foothills, a wide plain stretches across the sun horizon. Grelock is here, spewing heresies. A glint between the rocks catches your eye. You take a rough gemstone from the rocks. Your puny weapons are useless on Grelock. This gemstone may be valuable. You examine your surroundings. You are standing on a narrow stone path in a dark marsh. Greasy bubbles float to the top of the dark waters on either side and pop lazily, spattering your legs with muck and slime. A short stone tower squats here. No door is visible, and the stones are smooth and polished. A balcony juts out midway of the tower's face. A heady smell of incense mixed with the nauseating stench of the swamp. The stone path unfurls eastward towards a broad plain beyond the marshes. A wizard is here, gesticulating wildly from his balcony. Ooh, oh, the slayer of relic approaches, raw stone in hand, just as I've seen. The wizard's pointy hat bobs excitedly as he points a finger at you. Suddenly a pale orange arc of light extends from the knobby finger and pulls the gemstone from your back before you can react. The gemstone halts and hovers in the air before the wizard's nose. This shouldn't be true, the power is renewed, if I do or do. With that, he slaps the hovering stone, smashing it against the smooth stone on the tower. In a burst of light, the stone splits into two, and one lands in each outstretched palm of the hoping to wizard. Shard or the sword, wrapper in iron and shield, fine relic, black's heart for you. Take the chaff to a unique payment for a smooth to forge the weapon. He tosses the stones down which you leap forward to catch safely. Examine your surroundings. You are standing in the dusty market square of a quiet town. Many of the shops and homes lie abandoned, 
and the citizens at Cancine speak in hushed voices, casting furtive glances at the darkened skyline in the distant north. The ringing of an anvil breaks the silence regularly, where a moustached blacksmith bends over his work in the nearby tent. The blacksmith is here working, a priest is here drinking. The blacksmith regards you gruffly and is about to dismiss you when you produce the polished gemstone from your bag. He sets his hammer aside and twirls his moustache. A right fine stone, that is, he says, admiring the fasted stone. What would you be needing, then? Following your careful instructions, the smithy reforges your rusty sword with the magical shard at the centre of the blade. The priest drunkenly curses the undead who have defiled his church. You present him with the decapitated zombie head from your bag. Praise you. He hiccups. Perhaps Grilok's influence isn't so strong. With that, he turns the decanter over in the head and tosses into a fireplace where it bursts into purple flame and burns up almost instantly. I must gather the faithful. He presses a brass key into your palm. Please, help yourself to what little may be of use at my chapel. An enchanted weapon to defeat Grelok, key given to you by the priest. You walk to the north. Dust motes hang lazily in the shafts of the coloured light stretching across the chapel from peaked windows. The pews, pulpit and everything else are covered in fine mist. There is a very deep stone cistern near the entrance. It is full to the brim with blessed water. There is more than enough water here to fill your tiny flask. Your flask is full of blessed water. You walk to the west. When you draw your sword, Grelot lowers his great horned head and bellows laughter in your face. You grit your teeth and swing a mighty two-handed blow, the magical blade ringing clearly even amid the tumult of throaty cackling. You swing the sword so fiercely it escapes your grip and hurdles in the open more than monstrosity, lost from sight in the afraid darkness of Grelot's throat. You step back as Grelot jerks his mouth shut and stands upright. He is still for a moment, then starts clawing at his neck. Muffled, a ringing can be heard as if from a great distance. Suddenly, Grelok's chest bursts in a fount of vicious green blood. The ringing can be heard clearly now, and as if thick life blood oozes around the protruding tip of the magic sword, the storm clouds swirling the peak are already clearing. Grelok is defeated.